be unto the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Bow and mind be unto the Lord forever and ever. Amen, amen. Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and mind, be us to the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Oh, amen, amen. Blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor. Power and mind. Be yours to the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. Who is alive? Amen. Is alive. Jesus is alive. Forever is alive. Amen. Is alive. Amen. He is alive. Jesus is alive. Forever he is alive. Amen. <laughs> he is alive. Amen. He is alive. Jesus is alive. Forever he is alive. Amen. Unto the Lord be the glory, great thing he has done. Unto the Lord be the glory, great things he has done. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he has done unto the Lord. Be the glory. Great things he has done. Great things he has done. Greater things he will do unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things he has done. He has promised he will never fail. I will follow, I will follow him. He has promised he will never fail. His faithfulness is forevermore. Oh, His faithfulness is forevermore. The Lord has promised He will never fail. I will follow. I will follow Him. My God has promised He will never fail. His faithfulness is forevermore. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things He has done. Unto the Lord 
be the glory, great things he has done. You are Yahweh, hey, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, hey, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha. And Omega, you are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. Good evening, everyone. God bless you all. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God strengthens you. And the Lord protects you, preserves you and your entire household in the name of Jesus. We are here again, we have come again, Father, we are here again, Holy Ghost, come and take control, oh, we are here again, we are here again, Father, we are here again, Holy Ghost, come and take control. We are here again. Oh, we are here again. Father, we are here again. Holy Ghost, come and take control. Holy Spirit, be my comforter. Holy Spirit, lead me As I walk in along the way, the road is so narrow. Holy Spirit, you will see the truth. Father, we return glory and honor to you. Thank you for the privilege to be counted among the living. Thank you for preserving our life. Thank you for preserving our soul. We thank you for mercy. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us once again into your glorious presence. We shall receive all the glory, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have come again to learn at your feet. Holy Spirit of God, the, our guide, our advocate, our teacher, our comforter. We ask that you comfort us through the word of God. We ask that you guide us through the word of God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, our Father, we pray for open heaven. Let your heaven be open over us. Breathe on your word, even as we study your word. We ask for the grace of a partition of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, help us to be a doer of your word. A grace to put your word to practice. Lord, we ask that you release that grace upon us in the name of Jesus. Whatever that is not of you that want to stand against the world, not to have fulfillment in our life. Also, God, we pray that you take it away in the name of Jesus. No one can understand his secret thoughts. But we pray, Lord, that you cleanse us, O oh God, from every of our secret fault. We cannot understand our secret errors. Cleanse us, Father, from every secret fault. We ask for mercy. Anyway, we have sinned against you. Lord, show us mercy. Mercy, Father. Show us mercy. Show us mercy, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as many that are said to receive your word, we are that the word, we have free course in our life. Let the word manifest your power and your glory in our life in the name of Jesus. Let your word transform us. Let your word settle our case. Reveal yourself to us by your word, Father, in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every principalities and powers of darkness, Every powers of air, I want to rise against the knowledge of the truth. We we'll rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. Every evil imagination that want to exalt itself above the knowledge of God, Father, we we'll bring them under captivity. In the name of Jesus, help us, O God, to be a beneficiary of Your Word. In the name of Jesus, breathe on Your Word, Father. Let it be lively. Heal us by Your Word. Heal us that we may be healed. Save us that we may be saved. For thou art our praise, O God. May you heal us by your word. May you deliver us by your word. In the name of Jesus. Settle us by your word, Father. 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious God. Blessed be your name. Breathe on your word, Holy Spirit. Use me to deliver your word tonight. He asks for grace. I ask for understanding. I ask for clarity. I ask for revelation. Insight in your word, Father, in the name of Jesus. It's not my way, but your way. Let your way be done. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. Praise Master Jesus. Good evening, my brethren, brothers and sisters, fathers, mothers. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that your purpose of being here to learn at the feet of Jesus will not be vain in the name of Jesus. Quickly, we are still working on the topic, the foundation of a believer. Yesterday, uh, a day before yesterday, we were privileged to treat a faith foundation rooted in the world. And yesterday, we continued from where we stopped. And today, we are still continuing from where we stopped yesterday. Praise Master Jesus. By the grace of God, by the help of God, we we'll continue from where we stop. Amen. So we look at the faith that is rooted in God's word. Remember Romans 10 verse 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and you hearing the word of God. So hearing the word of God every day is for our profit. Because the word of God has also admonished us that we should meditate on his word day and night to observe and to do praise master jesus so don't be tired of hearing god's word if you are not tired of breathing so you should not be tired of hearing god's word any fish that is taken away from the water because the water is the inhabitants of a fish is already doomed for death so also, any believer that pulled away from hearing the, God, the word of God is already doomed for hell. So, I will admonish each and every one of us, brethren, brothers, and sisters, that you stay close to the, the word. As the word of God, the word of God when you let it when you reach it with all wisdom. And I pray, as we look into the word of God tonight, we will get new insight, fresh revelation, fresh revelation, the word in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise Master Jesus. Quickly, we want to continue on the definition of the word faith. What faith is? What faith is? We said, we will end it yesterday, that faith is a spiritual medium through which active partnership is established with the invisible God, thereby empowering the man to do the impossible through faith. Through faith, so through faith, the elders obtain good reports. In other words, if we are to obtain good report as well in our endeavor, then we need to grow in faith. Any man without faith. It will be difficult for such person to enter the place of rest, which is heaven. It will take faith for us to assess the heavenly race. Good evening, all. Good evening. Good evening. You are welcome, my beloved brother, Prince Pedro. You are welcome, sir. God bless you, sir. My beloved Agboti Friday. God bless you, sir. You are welcome. My beloved sister, Patience Ogun. You are welcome. My beloved sister, best Agbons, you are welcome. Good evening, good evening. God bless you all. You are welcome. And every one of you who is here that is not here, good evening to you all. I welcome you all. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we say faith is a spiritual medium through which active partnership is established, thereby empowering the man to do the impossible. Praise Master Jesus. So today we are going to look more and more the meaning of the word faith so that we we'll know what we are working on. It takes faith to serve God. It takes faith to follow God. And it takes faith to assess the hidden riches of God. And it takes faith to enter the place of rest, which is the heaven. Praise Master Jesus. So what is faith? 
Hebrews 11 verse 1 that says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things you have not seen, but you hope on it. So the definition of faith means faith is unseen substantial hope. Faith is unseen substantial hope for until your desired result is obtained. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Faith is unseen substantial hope for. It's substance that you can handle. You are not seeing it but you hope on it. Until your desired result is obtained, you refuse to let go, you refuse to give up. It's a question I always ask myself. Many give up at the verge of breakthrough. You pray against every powers of failure at the verge of breakthrough. You are about to break forth, to assess into your testimony, to get your testimony. That is where most believers, many, they turn back they give up the question i always ask myself my giving up will it change my status no so my pressing will it change my status it might change it so i should keep on pressing that is why apostle paul said i i press towards the mark of high calling i press towards the mark of his high calling you keep pressing in the kingdom of god only those who are persistent in pressing through, I only entitled to break through. Pray God will help understanding in the name of Jesus. So we are, we have looked the definition of the man Abraham who sees faith as forging ahead, irrespective of the happening, trusting the Lord. Praise Master Jesus, and the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, Thirty five. Mark 5, 25 to 35 or to 42. Faith, through definition of the woman with the issue of blood, we know her story very well. Who people monk, Jesus does not have time for kind of people like you. You are dirty, you are sticking, your, your body is smelling full of blood. You don't even have money, you are poor, you are this, you are that. No money to treat yourself anymore. Jesus don't have time for kind of people like you. Then the woman knew within herself. That my able bishop, my pastor, Pastor Gracious Mercy. Good evening, sir. God bless you, sir. I'm happy to see you online here again. God bless you, sir. It has been a long time. You are welcome, sir. Christ Temple, God bless you, man. You are welcome. Good evening, everyone. So faith is forging ahead irrespective of the happening. No matter what you are facing, no matter what you are going through, don't give up. Keep pressing. If you give up now, what will be your benefit? What will you start to gain if you give up? So therefore, refuse to give up and keep pressing on. Keep holding on. Do not give up. Until your desired result is obtainable. That is what faith is. Forging ahead, irrespective of the happening. Don't withdraw back. Push forward, press forward, keep pressing on, keep holding on. The woman of the issue of blood, she refused to observe protocol. And as such, she breaks every protocol. So faith is breaking protocols to see that your desired result is obtainable. Now no one can ever achieve this. Faith will tell you is a lie. You prove them wrong. And every philosophy word, word of the philosopher, you prove it abortive. That is what faith do. So if there is nothing that can stop God not to have his way, there also nothing can stop faith from having his way. Remember yesterday, I keep sounding on it, that no sinner has faith. Anybody living in sin does not have faith. What you have is the message of God that is still speaking for you. If you are still living in sin, you don't have faith. Because the word of God says, the just shall live by faith, not the unjust, not the unrighteous. The righteous shall live by his faith. So if you are not righteous, what is speaking for you is mercies of God. So repent before it will be too late. 
Otherwise, if you die and you die your sin, you go to hell straight. It is only those who are alive that can make negotiation about their, where they are going. Once death takes place, you don't make negotiation anymore. The word of God is for the living, not for the dead. And God is a God of the living, not for the, not the God of the dead. Repentance is for the living, not for the dead. But judgment is for the dead. Once you die, you face your judgment. So now that you are alive, you have opportunity, second chance now to repent. Because the day draws near, and the mm -hmm. Son of Man will appear in His glory. If you are dying to buy car, build houses, do this, those things are good. But they are nothing for you to compare to your soul. Those things are for this your eating body, for the fresh, to make it sweet, comfortable. But what will make your soul comfortable is your righteousness and your holiness. Being stay close to the Lord is what makes your soul to be comfortable. So what is faith? Luke 5 verse 5, let's see. From there we draw a definition of the word faith. The book of Luke chapter 5 verse number 5. I'm reading from New King James Version. Luke chapter 5 verse number 5. If it is possible to bring some people into video so that we can be sharing the word of God together. I will love it. Praise God. Luke chapter 5 verse 5. He said, but Simon answered and said to him, to Jesus, Master, we know the accounts of Simon Peter. We have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will lay down mm -hmm. the nets. Nevertheless, at your word, I will lay down the nets. In Isaiah 53 verse 1, he said, who I believe our reports. To such so is the arm of God revealed to. Who is that person that believes the report of the Lord? Then he will see the gracious power of God. The power of God will be revealed to such individual. So as you make up your mind today in holiness and in righteousness to believe God, you will see the hand of God upon your life in the name of Jesus. The power of God, the glory of God will manifest in your life. In your career, in your spiritual life, in your marriage, in your business, in the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 12, verse 38 to 42. John chapter 12, 38 to 42. Mm -hmm. It said, While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. Verse 37. But although he done he had done so many signs before then. They did not believe in him. Upon all the signs. Yet they did not believe in him. That the word of Isaiah the prophet. Might be fulfilled which he spoke. Lord who I believe our reports. Isaiah 53. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed. Therefore they could not believe. Because Isaiah said again. Verse 40. He has blinded their eyes. And hardened their hearts. Least they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their heart, and turn, so that I should heal them. Verse 41. These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory, and spoke of him. Verse 42, the last verse. Nevertheless, even among the rulers many believe in him. But because of the Pharisee, of this word Pharisee, People who are far to see the good thing that God is doing in your life. People who are so far to see the glory of God around them. People are so who are who are so far to see that the heaven is drawn near. People who are far to see that the Son of Man is about to appear. People who are far to see that the rapture is about to take place. People who are far to see that the judgment is so ripe. People who are far to see that the ark of God is about to close. As it was in the days of Noah. These are far received. They are far to see. The testimony of our Lord Jesus. And the sad disease are those who are sad. When they see God doing something great in your life. 
They see God giving you testimony. They are so sad. They are called sad, you see. Sad when they see the good things of God. Sad when they see an army of Christ rising in this our generation to, to bring sanity in the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ has been polluted by so many men. But when these Sadducees we see you rising, God raising you to bring sanity, to bring holiness and righteousness, the fear of God into the body of Christ again. They are sad to see such things. And as such, they want to fight to kill such move of God. But not forgetting that God owns their life. Praise Master Jesus. I pray God we have understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. So there are those who are far, who are sad to see, far to see. So they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. There are many, many believers today. Their pastors have taught them the fear of men, but they have never taught them the fear of God. They live according to the fear of men, but they don't live according to the fear of the Lord. What foundation have you been building on? Are you building on man's foundation or the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ? That has been the error in the body of Christ. Fear has departed. Holiness has departed. Righteousness has departed. Marine has taken over the body of Christ because most pastors have yielded their souls to the things of this world. Pray God we help our understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. So from this scripture that we have read now, at thy word, I will lay down the net. So faith is believing the word of God is final. And every other word is a counterfeit and it comes late. So faith is believing that the word of God is the final say. Every other word is counterfeit. And the it is. Praise Master Jesus. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. What is this? Let's look at the book of Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 25. The man, the man Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 25. Because we live in a faithless generation. They have faith in their pastors, but they don't have faith in Jesus. But neither do they have faith in God. Because they don't even know God, they don't know Jesus. They only know their pastor. This is where the whole issue lies. Daniel chapter 3 verse 16 to number 25. I read fast quick. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is this, our God who we say, is able to deliver us from the body for the furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Verse 15. But if not, let it be known to you now, today, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor we will worship the golden image which you have set up. Most believers serve their pastors. They are not serving God. They thought they are serving God. If you are living in sin, you thought you are serving God. You are serving mm -hmm. Satan. You are not serving the Lord, but you are serving Satan. If you are living in sin and thought you are serving God, you are not wasting your time. It's not God you are serving. Serving Satan. Because Satan that is taking credit in your way. Any work you are doing that is not God that is taking credit, no, is not profitable to God. Therefore, it should be profitable to Satan. We will not bow down, never serve your golden image, your carved image, whatever. Verse 19, then King Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, full of anger, and the expression of his face changed. Meshach and Abednego. His father commanded that they hit the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. The day you will tell your pastor this your way of life is not the way of Christ, it will rise up against you. That is how you will know if he is really doing the way of God. 
or is doing the way of Satan. You tell somebody the truth that this way I refuse to follow and the person rise up against you, that person is doing the way of Satan, not the way of God. But by all means, you must save your soul. You must save your soul. Because it's your soul that will face rest in heaven or condemnation in hell. You must save your soul. You must save your soul. You must save your soul. Because of ignorance, many are heading towards destruction. Comfortable with trusting in I pray heaven is our home. Heaven is our home. Which heaven? If God has if God has saved all unclean people in heaven, even Lucifer will have still be in heaven now. I pray God will help understanding the name of Jesus Christ. These men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their tumbles, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning furnace furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot. The frame of the fire keep those, those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If these men, three wise men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if their way was not right with God, even the frame of the fire alone will have smelt them, burned them to ashes. We are, we are some believers, you are living in sin, and you are casting a binding devil, binding Satan. When you are in the custody of Satan, you are casting a binding him. Don't be deceived. If you die in that sin, you go and miss Satan. Then you will receive the punishment of your binding and casting him day and night. So, take sense. Get wisdom. Get understanding. And escape that bondage of sin that leads to destruction. Verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning forest, the fairy furnace, verse 24. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to this counselor, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Verse 25, the last verse. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hot. And the form of the fort is like the Son of God. Even believer recognize that the fourth man, the face looks like the Son of God. Can you see? And we believe that we don't want to live in holiness and righteousness. Putting Jesus to public disgrace the second time. If this man were, were not right, if they were unrighteous and unholy in their way, they want to exercise this their faith, it will burn them to ashes. That is why the word of God said in Proverbs 16 verse 7, if a man waits, praises the Lord, he will make his enemy to be at peace with him. You cannot be a sinner and say you want to exercise faith because you don't have faith. No sinner has a faith. What sinner have is mercy. The mercies of God that is still speaking. No faith. Because the just shall live by his faith. Not the unrighteous. Let's tell each other the truth. And stop following the word of milk. You are blessed in the morning. Receive your miracle alert, your miracle bank alert, your car key, your house key, your husband, your wife. All those things are good, but they are not primary, they are secondary. Your primary goal is your soul to be saved. If your soul is saved, those things will be added cheaply. Most of all, we seek the kingdom of God with dirtiness, with sin and iniquity. And we thought we are seeking God's kingdom. We are seeking Satan's kingdom. If you don't know, know now. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So if you throw away righteousness, you are not seeking the kingdom of God. You are only seeking the kingdom of Satan. You, you say, I seek the kingdom of God and every other thing, let it be added. Which other thing will be added? Yes, so every other thing will be added. Satan will add it to it because your will is not right. But if your will is right, then God will begin to add those things to you. But if your will is not right, there is no way God will add. It's Satan that will add. Satan will give you comfort. It will make this to be working well for you. So that we arrest your brain. You will no longer think what you are doing is sin. Anything you ask, Satan will allow it to come. It doesn't block it. 
No, Daniel was ways was right. Daniel prayed for the first day. Daniel knelt down to pray. His prayer was answered. But Satan had to hold the blessing not to come. But as we Daniel was already in the custody of Satan, Satan will allow the blessing to go, so that Daniel will believe because of his righteousness. That is why anything is asking for, they are being given to him free of charge. That is why some fornicators, adulterers, uh, 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 fraudsters, the word they use. Ah, even all believers who don't, go, I don't go to church, I don't go to native daughter. Anything I ask God for, it is be released. Do you know God? How do you not know God? When you don't have Christ in your life, you are talking about God. Where do you know the God? <laughs> even the devil, the demon, they mention the name of God, but they tremble. So don't use that to justify that you know God. I pray God will help you understand in the name of Jesus Christ. We are still looking, drawing, we are about to draw out the, uh, the definition of the word faith. Luke 1 verse 31 to 35. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 31 to 35. I read quickly. He said, And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and we be called the son of the highest and the lord god will give him the throne of his father david and he will reign over the house of jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end of his kingdom there will be no end 34 then mary said to the angel how can this be since i do not know a man verse 35 and the angel answered and said to her the holy spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you therefore also that that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of god for his master jesus so from this passage of the scripture what then is faith because is scientists fig proof will tell you any woman that does not mean a man cannot conceive a man has to be there before the woman can conceive but the case of jesus beds defy that scientist law Scientists law will tell you, you throw a man into fire, it will roast the man. But the case of Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego prove that scientist law wrong. So what then is faith from this uh, portion, passage of the Bible? Faith is trusting God in all things that is able and capable to do all for you. Faith is trusting God in all things that He is able and capable to do all things for you and for straight scientist law. That is faith. Faith for straight scientist law. Faith is believing God that is able and capable to do all things for you. And that same faith for stated the scientist law. It for stated the law of science. Even if God did not rescue us from your hand, we will not bow down. What a dangerous fate. What a violent fate. And he grant them violent victory. Violent fate. That spirit of faith may come upon you and I in the name of Jesus. A spirit of faith may come upon you and I in the name of Jesus. What then is faith? Another definition of the word faith. Let's look at the book of uh, Ephesians 6.16. Ephesians 6.16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Ephesians 6.16. Above all, faith is above all things. <laughs> above all, taking the shield of faith. Let's look at 2 Timothy 4 verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse number seven the book of second timothy the book of second timothy 4 verse 7 says i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept defeat i have fought the good fight i have finished the race and I have kept the faith. And First John 5 verse 4 say, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our own faith. 
Remember, no sinner has faith. If you are living in sin, you don't have faith. It is when your way is righteous and holy that you have faith. Whatsoever is born of God, 1 John 5, 4, overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So faith puts you in the class of overcomer. You want to overcome that usual challenge that you have been passing through? What you need is faith. It will put you in the realm of overcomer. Put you in the class of overcomer. That is what faith do. That is the work of faith. it. Puts you and I in the class of overcomer. So from this portion of the Bible, what is faith? Remember, faith is above all. Ephesians 6 verse 16. If possible, let me read it from here. Ephesians 6 verse number 16. Let's see what the word of God says here. I've mentioned it that it says above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So all the arrow, all the whatever, whatever they are throwing. If your way is righteous, your way is holy, and you have faith in God through his word, by the power of the Holy Ghost that Jesus manifesting in his glory, then it will shield you from that arrow. Shield your family. Shield everything, your business, your career, that, anything that concerns you to be protected. That is true faith. But if you are living in sin, forget you don't have faith. Don't deceive yourself. So the definition of the word now from the uh, portion of the Bible that we have read. Faith is a conquering weapon. Of force draw from the invisible one to conquer the invisible fight of the wicked one. From the portion of the Bible, the definition of faith is faith is a conquering weapon of force drawn from the invisible one from God to conquer the invisible fight of the wicked ones. Faith is a spiritual weapon drawn from the invisible God to overcome the battles of the evil one. Because First John 5 verse 4, for whatsoever is born of God. If you are living in sin, you are not born of God, you don't know God. If you are still living in sin, you don't know God. Don't deceive yourself. I go to church, but I'm living in sin. You don't know God. You have not even started. You have not known God yet. I will open to you so that you will see. You are living in sin. And you are claiming you know God. You don't know God. But when you repent, then you will know God. Faith. It's for those who walk in righteousness and holiness, not those who is living in sin. First John 3 verses. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sin has neither seen him nor know him. <laughs> First John 3 says, You are a choir mistress, you are a choir master. Choir mistress, you want to finish all the boys in your church. You are a choir master, you want to, to reap all the guests in your church. You are thinking you know God. You don't know God. What you know is Satan. Because you are doing the work of Satan. If you know God, you will do the work of God. That's what Jesus said. If you are ignorant, you will do the work of God. So if you say you know God, why are you not doing the work of Satan? Which means Satan that you don't know God. Four verses. Who abides in God does not live in sin. Whoever living in sin has never neither seen him nor know him. I confess Jesus is my savior, is my Lord, is my savior, is the bishop of my soul. But sin is always your priority. You your your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, your rest, everything is coupled with sin. And you say you know God. Don't be deceived. If you die in that situation, you have fire straight. No big deal about it. Cry for your soul. When you cry for your soul, Lord, my soul, why do you want to go to hell? 
My soul, you must not go to hell. Cry for your soul now that you have second chance, you are still alive. To redeem your soul from that bondage of destruction. So you see, if you are in church and you are living in sin, you don't know God, you know Satan. You are comfortable. You are doing transaction, a girl and a boy. A girl and a boy living together, you declare themselves to be a married person now. My wife, my husband. What a foolishness. I say that will be rejoicing in it. And you are comfortable committing the same transaction, bed of fornication. And you are happy. Go and do the right thing before it is too late. Do not do the right thing. And you die in that bed of fornication. You go to hell. Hell straight. If you die in that bed of fornication, you go to hell straight. Go and do the right thing. Go and make adjustment. It is for your own good. It doesn't affect any other person. Everybody, every man will stand and bear a cause. On that day, you will bear your own judgment. Even the girl you are community fornication with, the boy you are doing it with, you both will stand on your own and bear your own judgment. So you better repent now. Repent from that bed of fornication. Because even if you are singing, you are singing with emotion, crying, people are going along crying with you that, ah, we are blind, we are going to hell. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's not Holy Spirit. You can't be sleeping with a woman you are not married to, a man you are not married to. And you will be singing in the church. You are crying. You are crying with emotion. And you say, it's Holy Spirit is anointing. Which anointing? Yeah. It's anointing of Satan. That is that is causing you tears. And the purpose of your tears is, all these people that I'm leading to hell, they are so blind. That is why you are crying. Not that the anointing is moving you. You are crying for the soul of those people. Hey, what an ignorance. All these people are so blind. I am leading them to hell. On a way they don't know. Father. You are not crying because... The Holy Spirit is using you. You just come out of bed from vacation on Saturday. On Sunday, you hold the microphone. You are singing. You are sharing tears. And because some people are blind to see, they they jump along the sheep that is leading them to hellfire. Begin to share tears as well along with you, not knowing what you are sharing tears for. Ah, these people are blind to see that I'm leading them to hell. They are crying for their soul, but they they don't know what you are crying for. The joy with the emotion. You will say anointing when you just leave bed of vacation yesterday. Don't go there. Let's call it spade a spade. Don't allow Satan to deceive you anymore. What I'm revealing to you now is the secrets, the tricks that Satan are using to rob God's own people from assessing heavenly race at the end. That is the secret. It will make you comfortable in that sin. Conscience has destroyed your conscience. You no longer have conscience again. And the worst part of it, some pastor will give you position in church to tie you down in that sin. Why will you give a sinner position in church? Why will you give what is holy to the swine? Why will you give to what is holy to an unholy? That is what Jesus said. Don't give what is holy to an unholy person. Let's call a spade a spade. You now use the word because the person have a seed. We see. Lucifer, Lucifer has a seed. The seed of Lucifer, nobody on earth will have the seed yet. Someone, the angel that would sing and bring down the glory of God. But yet it will cast down. And you say you have a seed, you have a gift. If you have a gift, why are you using it for Satan? Any gift you use for Satan, you are using him to, to the glory of Satan. You go to hell if you die without repentance. Let's call a spade a spade. Let us not be deceived. I pray God will help our understanding in the name of Jesus. But the thing is, I'm so angry because Satan has dealt a lot with me. So you that is there, if you do not learn sense now from this message, you have heard the message and you have completed already. If you refuse to mm -hmm. repent now, you die and go to hell. Why do you need faith as a believer? Why do I need faith as a believer? Let's look at one. By the grace of God, tomorrow we we'll continue from here. Why do you need faith as a believer? You need faith to please God. You need faith to please God. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Sinner has no faith. So, that is why like sinner thing you are doing as long as you are living in sin. It's Satan that is taking the glory, taking the credit. It's Satan that is pleasing. No, but only the righteous has faith. And when the light righteous who walk in faith, praises the Lord. Praises the Lord. Hebrews 11, verse 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that God 
is a rewarder of those who diligently, seriously seek him in holiness and in righteousness. If you are not seeking God in holiness and righteousness, you are expecting reward. Don't be deceived. Stop deceiving yourself. Stop deceiving yourself. Stop deceiving yourself. And Proverbs 16 verse says, If a man's way pleases the Lord, he will make his enemy to be at peace with him. So you need faith to please God. And when your way pleases God, then God makes your enemy to be at peace with you. God bless you all. I end my message here by the grace of God tomorrow. We continue from where we stopped by 7 p.m. European time. Nigeria time, Africa time will be 6 p.m. I pray that this word we have received, the grace to walk with the world be released upon us in the name of Jesus. As we make amendment to our way, may the spirit of faith rest upon us in the name of Jesus. And any power that want to keep you in that sin, May that power be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Any challenge you have been facing in your life, I decree tonight by the mercies of God, that challenge is over in the name of Jesus. That bed of sickness is over. That bed of affliction is over forever in your life in the name of Jesus. That worldly life that Satan has kept you for so long, it is over in your life in the name of Jesus. That your good heart desire, that your expectation, because the word of God says, surely there is an end, and your expectation shall not be cut off. Every of your good expectation from God, he that to, I decree, they be released speedily in the name of Jesus. May the fire of God rest upon you, may the Holy Spirit of God rest upon you, so that you will be able to walk in the path of holiness and of righteousness. At the end, you will make heaven not hell. Your soul will not die in hell. Your soul will not rot in hell. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord Jesus Christ heal you from that sickness now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ make you whole now in the name of Jesus. That demons of barrenness. That demons of power in the name of Jesus. I command them to remove their hand off your left hand. In the name of Jesus. That demon of badness is destroyed now. Send it back to hell in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree for open doors of opportunity, open doors of breakthrough, open doors of turnaround, open doors of lifting in the name of Jesus. By your faith in God, in righteousness and in holiness, you will make heaven at last in the name of Jesus. The faith to run this race, to stand firm like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, irrespective of the challenge. To say no to sin. To say no to deviation. May that spirit of faith come upon you afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for breakthrough, supernatural turn around for you. May your spiritual life take a new turn around in the name of Jesus. Your service for God shall not be in vain. Therefore, the great keep the heart of holiness for your service for God, you only not to be in vain. May it be released upon you afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree this hour, whatever has kept you to the things of this world, today they are living in the name of Jesus. Because a friend with the this world makes you an enemy of God. James 4 verse 4. When you make your friend to the worldly things, automatically you have made yourself an enemy of God. Therefore, anything that Satan wants to use to tie you down so that you will love the things of this world more than your God, the maker. I decree those things be destroyed. Every scheme of the devil, every strategies of the devil to rob you of your heavenly kingdom, I decree their strategy be exposed and be frustrated in the name of Jesus. Job 5 verse 12 says, For the Lord disappoints the devices of the enemy of the wicked so that their hands cannot carry out their plans. Every plans of the wicked one against your soul. I decree disappointment over them now. In the name of Jesus. Be blessed of the Lord. May the blood of Jesus cover you, preserve you and your household in the name of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus speak for you. In that place of work, may the blood of Jesus speak for you. You that is working in the place of unholiness. May the spirit of God come upon you to quit from that place of unholiness. In the name of Jesus Christ. God will give you a better job that will enable you to walk, to serve in spirit and in truth, in holiness and in righteousness. 
in the name of Jesus. That excuse, excuse of being living a life of sin. But the power in the name of Jesus, I command those excuses be destroyed. The Holy Spirit enters into your heart. You will no more have excuse for sin anymore. No more excuse to commit sin, to continue living in sin anymore. In the name of Jesus, you begin to say it's because of condition I'm living with a man that I'm not married to. But the power in the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God rests upon you to live above that sin, above that excuses. In the name of Jesus. Grace to correct things, to make things right. To arrange, to repair your foundation. May the Lord release that grace upon you afresh. In the name of Jesus. Beginning from today, the power of God will enter you and you begin to think where? Think of heavenly kingdom. Think of Jesus. Think about your soul and your salvation. In the name of Jesus. You will make things right beginning from now. In Jesus' glorious name, I have prayed. Shalom everyone. I want to go for Bible study from here. 8 p.m. European time. It's every day. If you are interested, you are valuable, you can join us through the Zoom link that is on my Facebook wall. Just from the link, join the Bible study. It's for everyone. It's not for church. It's, there's no denomination that have divided the body of Christ. No denomination. It's Christ. We are preaching Christ. Not church. Not denomination. We are not preaching religion. We are preaching Christ. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as you join, God Almighty will richly bless you by His word, reveal Himself to you in the name of Jesus. And also, we have a midnight prayer every day by 12 a.m. European time. Africa time will be 11 a.m. Uh, sorry, 11 p.m. European time is 12 a.m. So, it's still the same Zoom link. If you are interested, connect. It's to build your spiritual life. It's not about your church. There is no church in heaven. It's not about denomination, no denomination in heaven. Denomination that divide the body of Christ till today. That is the major problem in the body of Christ. So connect with the Zoom. And as you do, God will empower your spiritual life in the name of Jesus. Remember when men slept, the enemy wake up and sow bad evil in their life. Jesus said, watch and pray that you enter into no temptation. At least one hour. Pray midnight. At least one hour every day. Don't be too lazy. Don't be a lazy youth. Don't allow Satan to use laziness to rob you of your blessing. Wake up, awake, awake. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' glorious name. Tomorrow, see you again. Shalom. Together, let's share the grace. Let me the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us, even now and forever. Amen. And surely, the goodness and mercies of God shall keep following us in all the days of our life. And we shall keep dwelling in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Love you all. See you.